the lesson talking about polynomials. We've talked about the degree of a polynomial. So we want to talk about a couple of things. Evaluating a polynomial by direct substitution. Okay, Here we're putting a name to something you really already know how to do. How would I evaluate that polynomial when x is equal to 2? What would I do? You plug in x equal 2. Okay, you just didn't call it direct substitution. So f of 2 is going to be negative 3 times 2 cubed plus 2 squared. So everywhere there is an x, I'm replacing it with a 2. So this is negative 3 times 8 plus 4 minus 24 minus 5. That's negative 24 plus 4 minus 24 minus 5. That is what? Negative 48. Negative 53 plus 4 is... Someone know that one? Negative 49. Okay. <clears throat> so all I did was replace the x's with 2's. Evaluate that. Be careful about what signs I have. Okay. So that's just evaluating a polynomial with a direct substitution. Okay. What is f of 0? f of 0. How would I direct substitute a 0? What do I get? I plug in a 0 for x, and what do I get? Negative 5. Okay, be, that one's an easy one, guys. So all the x's goes away when they become 0. You get negative 5 uh, left over for that. Now, what we have next is a method other than direct substitution called synthetic substitution. We're going to deal with this method quite a bit throughout the entire unit, but we'll call it something a little bit different as we get further on. But we need to introduce the concept here. It may seem like a little bit of a magic, and it may seem like a harder way or a little bit more time consuming, but over time, this is going to save you time in certain things we get to in this unit. Okay? So this is called synthetic substitution. And what I do here, it's sort of like, you know, matrices, we took out the variables and we just dealt with the numbers. Sort of the same thing here. I'm just going to deal with the numbers, the coefficients, okay? So my process with synthetic substitution, if I'm trying to evaluate um, when x, sorry, I'm trying to evaluate f of 2. So I'm trying to evaluate this when x is equal to 2, then I put that number right here, okay? So that's where that number 2 comes from. And then what are these numbers here? Does anyone know what they are? Where did I get them from? Yeah, it's just what? It's the coefficients of f of x. Negative 3, 1, negative 12, and 5. Okay, so you set it up like this. Put the number you're trying to evaluate here. Write the coefficients of the polynomial. And then here's your process. And this is what you need to, to get sharp and memorize. Whatever that number is, I'm going to bring it down. Okay, that number is negative 3. Okay. And then I'm just going to start repeating a certain process. What is, I'm going to multiply, what is 2 times negative 3? Negative 6. I'm going to write that number right here. Okay. So I did. I brought this first number down, which is negative 3. Multiply 2 and negative 3, and you get negative 6. Okay. Now I'm going to add these two numbers together. What happens when I add 1 and negative 6? What do I get? Negative 5. And I'm just going to repeat this process. When I get a number on the bottom, I'm going to multiply that by this. What is 2 times negative 5? Negative 10. Okay. What am I going to do with those two numbers? I'm going to what? Add them, and I get what? Negative 22. Now I'm going to take this number and multiply by that, and what do I get? 2 times negative 22 is what? Negative 44. Now I'm going to add those two numbers and get what? Negative 49. Okay? <clears throat> so what I was able to do was with just multiplication and addition, I was able to figure this out and not having to use exponents, you know, raising numbers to a power. Now I'm going to work the same problem again just so you see how I did it. And this should just start, start to become muscle memory here. So if I want to evaluate when x is equal to 2, I write a 2 here. Okay, then I draw myself a little box, 
Now I'm going to write down all the coefficients that you see there. Negative 3, 1, negative 12, negative 5. If it helps, you can write, okay, this corresponds to my x cubed term. That corresponds to my x squared. That's my x, and that's my constant. Okay? First thing, what do I do with that negative 3? I bring it down here. Okay? And then the number that's on the bottom will always be multiplied. What is 3 times negative 3 times 2 is what? Negative 6. What do I do with the numbers that are lined up here? I add them. And then when I multiply this, I get negative 10. I add those numbers, I get negative 22. I multiply these numbers and get negative 44. And my answer is negative 49. Okay? So that's how I evaluate f of 2 is negative 49 using synthetic substitution. Okay? We'll do a few more of these. <clears throat> now here's the big gotcha with synthetic substitution. I want to do this case. I want to substitute x equal negative 3 into this polynomial. So out here, what number goes out here? Negative 3. And then I start writing, start writing the, the coefficients. Negative 3, that corresponds to my x cubed term, right? Now, what's the negative 12 go to? X. But here's the catch with synthetic substitution. To make it work, you have to have something for every term, okay? So, negative 3 goes with x cubed. Is there an x squared term? Is there an x squared term here? No, so I'm going to write a 0 there, okay? Is there an x term? Yeah, negative 12. Is there a constant? Negative 5. That's the biggest mistake people will make with, with synthetic substitution is forgetting to put a 0 as a placeholder, okay? If you don't put a 0 here, you're going to get an answer, but the answer is just what? wrong okay so you don't want to do that okay there's there's not going to be any clue to you that it's wrong you're going to think it's right okay but you've got to have when you have a polynomial that's a third degree that's why sometimes it's helpful to write up front what this goes with if this is a third degree then i've got to have three more spaces i got to have a squared x to the first and a constant okay so you have to have a, a number in every place now first step is to do what with this negative three bring it down okay what is negative 3 times negative 3? 9. What is 9 plus 0? 9. What is negative 3 times 9? Negative 27. Add those guys together and you get negative 39. Negative 3 times negative 39 is um, 117. Okay. What is 117 minus 5? 112. Okay, so like I said, the biggest mistake is forgetting to do a placeholder. Let's just do one more of those real quick. Um, I guess I'll do it on the board here so it can be recorded. Let's do, let's say I want to figure out if x equal 4 in the polynomial f of x equal x to the fourth plus x cubed minus x squared plus 7. Okay, so I want to figure out when x is equal to 4. So that means outside the box, I'll write a 4. And then since this is a 4th degree polynomial, I've got to have, this is my x to the 4th. What's my x cubed coefficient? 1. What's my x squared coefficient? Negative 1. What's my x coefficient? 0. And then 7. Okay. So you have to account for every place. This is x to the fourth, x cubed, x squared, x, and my constant, okay? So if I bring this number down, 4 times 1 is 4, add that to get 5. 4 times 5 is 20, add that to get 19. 4 times 19 is 76, add that to get 76. 4 times 76 is... 304, so 304 plus 7 is 311, okay? So when you substitute x equal to 4 in this equation, you get 311, okay? 
Does everyone see how I did that? Okay. You'll have practice. You'll have time. This will be something we would be doing. You know, you'll be doing it wherever you go for spring break. You know, you'll take it with you. So it will. will yeah, yeah. I'm getting feedback on this for the user, those those watching the recording. So, okay. Now, other things with polynomials. You need to be comfortable with operations around polynomials. You know, how they're added, how they're subtracted, things like that. Now, these are two binomials. They have two terms. You learned a method a long time ago to multiply these with what? Foil. foil. Now, some teachers don't like foil because it serves its purpose for this, but it, it breaks down when we start multiplying other things. It only works for, for binomial times binomial. Okay. So in this case, foil means multiply the first terms together. So if I foil this, I get what? 2x times 3x. The outside terms give me what? 2x times minus 2. The inside terms give me 4 times 3x. And the last terms give me 4 times 2. You, have to you don't have to, okay? So this gives me, what, 6x squared minus 4x plus 12x minus 8. So that is 6x squared plus 8x minus 8. So that's one way of multiplying these things together. Another way of multiplying them together is to do something like this. What you know is that everything in the first term has to be multiplied by everything in the second term. So that 2x needs to get multiplied by everything in the, so you can write it. This is 2x times 3x minus 2 plus and then this 4x has to be multiplied by everything. Excuse me, not 4x. It is 4 times 3x minus 2. Okay, So I'm distributing the 2x across this parentheses and the 4. And then when I do that, I'm going to get the same thing. This is what? 6x squared minus 4x plus 12x minus 8. Same thing. 6x squared plus 8x minus 8. Okay? Either way, just be organized about what you're doing, be methodical, and um, be organized uh, when you're doing these multiplications. Now, the reason we don't like the FOIL method because it breaks down in a hurry. You can't FOIL this. This is a binomial times a what? Trinomial. So I don't, there's no FOILing that goes on here. Okay? What I know that has to happen, now some people, there are a couple ways of doing this. I'm going to do it both ways. You figure out what you like. Um, Everything here has to be multiplied by everything here. So I have to say that this 4x needs to get multiplied by all of those. So that is 4x times 3x minus 7y plus 7. And then I know that this y also has to be multiplied by everything you see there. y times 3x minus 7y plus 7. Now what? I just distribute what I see here. This is what 12x squared minus 28xy plus 28x. Okay. Plus what is this? 3xy minus 7y squared plus 7y. And then I would try to look and see can I combine anything. Are any of those things able to be combined? Yeah, this and this, those two things can be combined. So my final answer will be 12x squared minus 25xy plus 28x minus 7y squared plus 7y. Okay? So that's why the FOIL method, some teachers don't like it because Really what you should be taught is you're distributing your multiplication, everything in the first term by everything in the second term. Now, there is another way of doing this. Um, I know Dr. K next door doesn't like it. I tend to like it because it seems to be an easier way to organize things for the kids. So I've got two things multiplied by three things. That's going to give me how many things? Six things, okay? So why don't I just organize it in a chart like this? I've got 4x plus y is going to get multiplied by 3x minus 7y plus 7. 
So this just breaks it down into six problems. What is 4x times 3x? That is 12x squared. What is 4x times negative 7y? Negative 28xy. What is 4x times 7? That's 28x. What is y times 3x? 3xy. y times negative 7y? That's negative 7y squared. And then y times 7 is 7y. And then if I look and see what can be combined, that those two things can be combined. So my final answer, I can just read it off of this chart, is 12x squared minus 25xy minus 7y squared plus 28x plus 7y. Okay, same answer that I got before. Okay, so your choice of how you want to do it. I had some kids last year that would not do this. They prefer just to do it like this. Some kids like to organize it in a chart like this. So it's your choice of how to do it. I feel like this is a good way to keep it organized, and it breaks it down into six easier problems by doing it that way. So let's take an example. Multiplying two trinomials together. Okay, So I can break it down to where it's this times all of this, this times all of this, and this times all of this. I prefer, at least when I get here, to just write it in a chart. So all I did was write x squared plus x minus 4. 2x squared minus 2x plus 3. Okay. What is x squared times 2x squared? 2x to the fourth. x squared times negative 2x. Yeah, minus 2x cubed. x squared times 3. That's 3x squared. x times 2x squared. That's 2x cubed. x times negative 2x. That's negative 2x squared. x times 3. Yep. And negative 4 times 2x squared is negative 8x squared. Negative 4 times negative 2x is what? 8x. And negative 4 times 3 is negative 12. Now, one of the nice things about arranging it in a chart, if you've arranged it such that you've got your second degree, your first degree, your constant, if you arrange it in descending order of the powers, then the things that are going to combine will line up for you. Those things will combine. These things will combine. And these things will combine. So you can look on the diagonals and see everything that goes together. So now what is my final answer here? It's going to be 2x to the fourth. What's 2x cubed minus 2x cubed? 0x cubed, okay? Negative 8. 3 and negative 2, that's what? Negative 10 and 3, that's what? Minus 7 x squared. <clears throat> and then how many uh, x's? 11 x minus 12. Okay. So this is one of those cases when it gets th three terms by three terms. I prefer to do it like this. Okay. Your choice about how you want to do that. Okay. So how do you think I do this? Multiplying three binomials together. What do you think? I'm waiting for ideas. <clears throat> there we go. Let's combine two of them because we know how to do that and then combine that with a third. Okay. So it doesn't matter which one. So let's just say x plus 1 times x plus 2 times x plus 3. Let's multiply those two together. Okay. So I get what? x squared. And then when I get the outside terms, that's 2x. The inside terms. Okay. And then when I combine like terms, this is what? x squared plus 3x plus 2 times x plus 3. There we we'll see how I got this. So I foiled the first two terms together. Now I've got a trinomial times a binomial. For me, I'm just going to go ahead and 
put that in a chart. I've got x plus 3 times x squared plus 3x plus 2. So two things multiplied by three things will give me how many things? Six things. x times x squared is x cubed. x times 3x is 3x squared. x times 2 is 2x. 3 times x squared is 3x squared. 3 times 3x is 9x. 3 times 2 is 6. And what you should be able to see is those two terms will combine and these two terms will combine. So the final answer is what? Yeah, x cubed plus what? Yeah, 6x squared plus what? How many x? 11x plus 6. Okay. So again, this is pretty straightforward. The biggest thing is you do, you've got to stay organized. There are many places to make mistakes. I mean, there were there were what four different operations. When I got to here, there were six different operations here. I had to combine two of those. So there were, there were probably like ten different arithmetic things that could have happened here uh, to make a mistake. But just stay real organized. Go back and check it. You should be uh, you should be good. Now there are some formulas. It is optional whether or not you want to memorize these. Okay, because you can always do the work. Um, when I see a minus b times a plus b, when I foil those together, I'm going to get a squared minus b squared. Okay, the difference of two squares. Um, the reason you can see this is if you didn't memorize this, if you had a minus b times a plus b, when you foil this, you get a squared minus ba plus ab and then minus b squared. Those middle terms go away, so this is just a squared minus b squared. Okay, so if you did not memorize that, you can always just multiply these two things together and see what you come up with. Okay, same thing when you square a binomial. So when I look at a plus b squared, don't ever think that that is a squared plus b squared. Okay, a plus b parentheses squared is a plus b times a plus b. You can either memorize this or you can just multiply them together. This is a squared plus plus ab plus ab. That's why you get the two ab's plus b squared. If it was a minus sign, you would get a squared minus ab minus ab. That's minus 2ab and then plus b squared. Okay. So again, optional whether or not you want to memorize these uh, because you can easily derive them. Now this one. It is optional, but it is handy if you memorize this one. I know it looks ugly. Because suppose you did not memorize what a plus b cubed is. Then you've got to figure out what a plus b times a plus b times a plus b. It just becomes a longer problem to do. Okay, You would have to multiply the first two together and get this, and then you'd multiply that by a plus b. So if you choose to memorize this formula, it can help you. Okay, so a plus b cubed is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. a minus b cubed. a cubed minus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared minus b cubed. Okay, so those are just helpful formulas. Like that, if you choose not to remember them, you need to be comfortable in taking something like this and getting something like this. Okay, so you need to be able to do a little bit more um, algebra to make that happen. So let's do a few examples. Let's perform the operation here. So here I'm multiplying two what? Binomials. That one you pretty much, do you want to chart or how do you do this one? Foil, okay. So in this one I can easily foil these. So what is 5y times 5y? Yeah, so 25y squared. The outside terms are going to be plus 15y. The inside terms are minus 15y, and then the last term would be what? Minus 9, okay? Now, if you'd memorize the formula, this is a minus b, a plus b, so it's just going to be a squared minus b squared. But if you didn't memorize it, you knew that these things fall out. 
my final answer is 25y squared minus 9. Okay. So again, if you recognize this as a minus b times a plus b, that's just a squared minus b squared. So my answer was 25y squared minus 9. Okay, so I could have just gone straight to the answer if I memorized the formula. You didn't waste a lot of time if you didn't memorize the formula because you just FOIL that and it simplifies pretty nicely. 4a plus 7 squared. What is the answer? What is the answer not to this one? What is not the answer? What do you not do to this? You don't do 4a squared plus 49. You know, that's not it. Okay. This is 4a plus 7 times 4a plus 7. Okay. When I multiply the first two terms together, I get what? 16a squared. The outside terms give me 28a. The inside terms give me 28a. And the last terms give me 49. So this is 16, and you should always combine like terms, plus 56a plus 49. Now the next one. <clears throat> I'm going to do this one two ways. Okay, one is with our formula. We have a formula, and one is just I don't know the formula, and how do I do it? Okay, so the formula we have is that a minus b cubed is a cubed minus three a squared b plus three a b squared minus b cubed. Okay, so in this case, a is equal to what in this formula? a is what? mn and b is what? 6, right? Okay. So this is a minus b cubed. Okay, so if I'm using my formula, my answer is going to be a cubed. What is a cubed? What's a? mn, right? What is mn cubed? Come on, guys. You're going to have to wake up for this, okay? How do I cube mn? I'll wait, okay? What is, the, what is the cube of mn? What happens when you cube that? All I'm doing, the guys, if this was Microsoft Word, I would be edit and replace. I would say everywhere there is an A, put M in. Everywhere there is a B, put a 6. Okay, Microsoft Word can solve this, so you can do it too. Okay, so if I substitute M in, what is M in cubed? I was hoping someone would say M cubed, N cubed. Okay, okay, that's A cubed. Minus 3. What's A squared going to be? M squared, N squared. What is B? 6. Okay. Plus 3 times A, B squared, that's 6 squared, minus B cubed. I'm just plugging in a 6 for B and an MN for A. So this is M cubed, N cubed, minus 18, M squared, N squared, plus 36 times 3, 108, MN minus 216 okay that's using the formula okay now I'm sensing a bit of unrest with that formula so you can either choose to use this formula or you can say formulas too hard if the formula is too hard you're gonna have to do it a different way so let's do it the different way I'm gonna create some space down here at the bottom and just do that one then we'll come back to this other one um, So it's what, mn minus 6 cubed? So let's do that. <clears throat> so mn minus 6 cubed. That is mn minus 6 times mn minus 6 times mn 
minus 6. Okay. What do I do with the first two terms? I FOIL them. So MN times MN, that's going to be M squared N squared minus 6 MN minus 6 MN and then plus 36. All of that times MN minus 6. I can combine these terms so I get what M squared N squared minus 12 MN plus 36 times Mn minus 6. What do I do with that? What do you want to do with it? I would make a chart. Okay. I find that helpful. So I'm going to write M squared N squared minus 12 Mn plus 36. And all of that is going to be multiplied by Mn minus 6. Okay. What is Mn times M squared N squared? What is that? M cubed N cubed. Okay. What is Mn times minus 12 Mn? That's minus 12 M squared N squared. Mn times 36. That's 36 Mn. Negative 6, so I get negative 6 m squared n squared, and here I get 72 mn, and here I get negative 216. Okay, now if you look at it, there should be some things that combine, so that will combine with that, and this will combine with this. So my final answer is m cubed n cubed and what is the minus 12 and minus 6 minus 18 m squared n squared plus 36 plus 72 108 mn minus 216 is that the same answer that I got before yes okay so this is how you do it if you did not memorize the formula. Okay? So it's not a whole lot of extra work. This is how you do it if you memorize the formula. Okay? But if you're going to memorize the formula, you got to memorize it correctly. Okay? You can't guess the formula because you'll be guessing at your answer. You'll be making mistakes. So if you can solidly memorize this formula, then it's easy to use it. But if you can't solidly memorize the formula, you're going to need to do this just like we did here at the bottom. Okay? So let's do one more. 2x plus 1 cubed. Let's do this without the formula. Okay? 2x plus 1 cubed. That's 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1. So the first two terms I multiply together, and what do I get? Yeah, 4x squared plus what? Plus 4x plus 1. That's what I'm going to get when I FOIL that. All of this times 2x plus 1. I pretty much, when I get to three terms, I'm going to organize that in a chart. So I'm going to have 2x times 1 and that's all going to be multiplied by 4x squared, 4x and 1. So 2x times 4x squared is what? 8 what? 8x cubed. 2x times 4x. 8x squared. 2x times 1. Okay. And then this one's easy. 1 times everything, 1 times everything in that row. So that's 4x squared. 4x and 1, and you should notice on the diagonals, these terms will combine, these terms will combine. So your final answer is what? Yeah, 8x cubed plus 12x squared plus what, 6x plus 1. 
Okay, any questions over that?